Welcome to the Fab Female Nutrition Podcast, episode 171. Hey there, I'm your host, Wendy Hill, and I'm a nutritional therapist and expert in female hormone health. I specialize in helping women gain confidence and understanding their bodies, allowing them to shine. This podcast allows me to share the knowledge I've built up, along with bringing you guest experts to support you in your journey. Brilliant. So Sarah, I am so pleased to have you here on the podcast today. So if you can just um, introduce yourself to the listeners and explain to me a little bit about what it is that you do. Uh, So I have been a Pilates instructor for years. I've always taught adult fitness all my life. And I've got three children. They're all grown up. But even as a Pilates instructor, I and I, as I say, and as an adult fitness instructor, I was having leaks after I'd had my children. And it's like, wow, what, what, how do I fix this? And, and I was looking, looking it up and I was thinking, if I'm a Pilates instructor, I should know this. And if I don't know it, how does anyone else know what's going on? And then I just realized how normal it is for women to have leaks. And, you know, we talk about, oh, I love so much. I weave myself and we think it's funny. And then I was thinking, that's not funny. It's all, it's like, we need to deal with this. <laughs> I would have assumed before I spoke to you that it was about um, the muscles being too weak. But you're you're saying that actually it's not just weakness. That actually there can be it can it can be not very flexible. I think that's what you said, isn't it? Is that am I using the right terminology here? Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, I think that was possibly what my issue was as a Pilates instructor because we're taught you hold your shoulders back, you pull your tummy in, and you spend your whole time. You know, as women, how often do we actually let our bellies go? You know, we're yes. always like, oh, got to pull it in. And that's something I've always, all my life, been aware of, my tummy. You know, I don't have a huge tummy, but you in don't. my mind, I have a big tummy. I've always had a tummy, and I've always wanted to pull it in. And if you're pulling muscles in, if you think, if I walk around with my bicep tightened the whole time, saying, hey, look at my biceps, they're really tight, and they're really big and strong, they're just going to weaken. We need movement to strengthen our muscles. So to strengthen my biceps, I need to move my arm out and in. I maybe need to use weights and I need to get it stronger. And our pelvic floor is directly connected with our diaphragm. So every time we breathe, our pelvic floor is lifting and it's lowering and it connects right through those deep abdominal muscles right down from our diaphragm down into our pelvic floor. So that pelvic floor is lifting and lowering. We breathe in. It fills with air, we breathe out, that that pelvic floor lifts as the diaphragm lifts and contracts. If we aren't breathing well, or we're holding those muscles tightly in our abdominals, our pelvic floor is not lifting and lowering, it's just doing a very little movement. So we need to learn to let go. We need to learn to let go, breathe, so that when we breathe, we breathe into the diaphragm, we breathe into the tummy, it fills the pelvic floor, and that pelvic floor actually moves and gets a workout. Does that make sense? It totally does. It really, and I was doing it as I was, I was kind of, you of course, I was doing my deep breathing, but actually breathing is so fundamental. I talk to it, you know, to clients about digestive health, about kind of breathing deeply. And we never, oh no, not we never, m- very few of us breathe properly. Like you said, we have lots of this shallow breath and that makes sense mm. because you can feel kind of the whole of the, the lower part of your kind of stomach and your, you, you know, because of your core and, and your pelvic muscles. You can feel them moving when you do breathe deeply. It's very simple, isn't it? Is, is that where, you know, if we, if we wanted to just kind of start, if someone's listening to the podcast now and going, oh, oh okay, you know, just breathing deeply, would that be one of the first things you'd say to them to do? You know, it really would be. Hmm. And quite often with my clients, I, I, when I run a, a workshop that after week one, they come back and they say, oh, you know, I just didn't have time to do the exercises. But but I was really thinking about my breathing. And it's like, yes, you've got it. That because if you're really tense and uh, anxious and busy, your shoulders go up, you're tight. And if you just go, oh, actually, I've just let go. You've immediately then connected to that pelvic floor. And that's what I want women to understand. It's, you know, so often, probably like, just like you were saying at the beginning, you hear that word pelvic floor and you squeeze, don't you? But yeah. Oh, yeah. But actually, when you hear that word pelvic floor, just start to connect with your pelvic floor. It doesn't mean you don't ever have to squeeze it up. You do have to be able to get that control, but it's more I get people to do a squeeze to connect with the breath, to show that you've got that connection. 
that is so it's easy it's easy of course it is but also it's really interesting to actually really connect with the muscles and realize even like as you're saying this how often i know now i realize how often i'm tensing and i don't necessarily realize it because it's a letting go that's a really powerful thing isn't it it's almost a little bit scary you're always like oh I don't know yeah. I don't know if I can I don't know if I, and I'm sure if people do suffer with bladder leakage as well I'm sure that's even scarier is that kind of like I'm not I'm not sure if I if I can afford to let go but yeah I suppose that's part of the process is is learning to to let go 100 percent. that is just that is really really important learning to let go because it is scary you know yeah if you're used to having leakage and and there is an absolute place for pads I think there are there, fantastic we're really really lucky we've got them but think of them as a plaster you're putting it on that wound you're going to get that wound better and then you're going to whip whip the plaster off yes yeah so use it use it while you need it particularly if you're doing these exercises but the aim is always to not to not have to be reliant on them yeah it is and and don't do things that make it worse until you've really connected them and, and sorted out the problem so you're talking about me using weights when i do my exercises but i would someone who's doing um who's got problems with their pelvic floor they're doing a deep squat we already talked about when when you squat down it's your pelvic opening. floor opens if you're holding weights as well and you're squatting down and you're leaking i would say put those weights down if then when you squat, you're still leaking, bring your feet together. Work on getting that pelvic floor stronger and more flexible before you open your legs, before you start using those weights. So don't think every time I, every, oh, every time I run, every time I do weights, I leak. Think, okay, that's not okay. I need to step back. So if you leak when you run, you need to learn how to get that pelvic floor stronger. Walk at the moment, walk on softer ground. Uh, and then you can, it's not that you can never lift weights again. It's not that you can never run again. Get that pelvic strong before you do it. That is such a really good tip because we do push ourselves, don't we? We're kind of like, oh, you know, well, I need, and you know, I need to be doing, if there's like three, le- I do it when I go to yoga, yoga, if they go, this is the easy option, this is the intermediate, and this is the advanced option. I'm always trying to do the advanced option. And sometimes I have to go get a whole word for myself. I go, when did you just do, I was in a class a few weeks ago and they were all like 20 something. So I was twice all their age. And they're all doing these like sort of stand, like handstand type things, not like on their heads, but like putting their hands between their legs and kind and I couldn't do it. Yeah. And I'm like, just go for the easier option. What What are you doing? You know, you're like, just give yourself a break. And we don't do it. I've got to run the 10K. I've got to do this. It's like, geez, <laughs> just one step at a time. Just breathe. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're so right. But we are all the same. And 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 I start, and I'm exactly like you. I have to sit back and go, this is what I tell my clients. What are you doing? You know, you've got an injury in your, in your back of your thigh. Don't overstretch it. But I go, but I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> and then hobbling around the rest of the day. Oh. Um, can we talk about can we can we talk about something that again we don't talk about very often? But we, can we talk about sexual intimacy and kind of the pelvic floor as well? Because we can't ignore the fact that it is it is connected, isn't it? So these exercises again will help should help with that. Definitely, and and the you know particularly if you've had babies, I mean you know, your muscles are stretched. A lot. Of course they have. Yes. So <laughs> we do have to think about the the relaxing. We do have to think about the strengthening, getting that connection. So if you can really connect inside and pull up through that pelvic floor uh, and then release it, and and you can really feel that connection. Um, also connecting through, we, we've got three exits as women. We've got the back passage, the anus, the vagina, and the urethra. We've got the three exits. So then another thing you can do, and, and this isn't, I'm not talking to do this and hold it for long, for long periods of time and do it all day long, but if you just take a breath in and as you breathe out, draw up through your back, middle, front passage and just Feel those muscles just holding whilst you're breathing. You're not oh, clenching your whole face. You're just pulling up, holding it for a few breaths and then letting go. Thank you so much, Sarah. I've really, really enjoyed this. We will put all of the links in the show notes. Um, and yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I'm glad we can talk about this kind of thing and raise awareness. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Wendy. And please, women, talk about this. Do not just put up with it. Talk about it. That's a great one to end with. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Wendy. 
Thank you for watching this excerpt of this week's Fab Female Nutrition Podcast. If you'd like to listen to the full episode, then the link is in the notes below.